You're listening to I Love It When, and I'm your host, Mo. I'm a speaker, coach, and connector. You're in the right place if you're looking for some inspiration and you're ready to truly embrace who you are. My intention with this podcast is to help you see that you are so much more powerful than you realize. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of I Love It When. I'm your host, Margaret Smith. I go by Mo. And today I'm really excited to introduce you to Latrice Williams. I was introduced to Latrice through a friend and colleague of mine, Kathleen Metcalf, and I was immediately intrigued and inspired by her story. Latrice is the founder of the first female black owned brokerage in Spokane, Washington, called Vision Properties. Her brokerage is focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and she wants people to know that they have a space and a place with her. I'm going to give you just a couple like tidbits about what we talk about in the episode. One of those is part of her journey in real estate actually started when she was having dreams about all kinds of houses, all these houses she would walk into during her dreams, and that would later lead her into real estate. Something else that she dives into is that she was really quite comfortable in the job that she had. She was making $2,400 a month. And so the idea of leaving that job and taking the leap into the unknown, the leap into the real estate world was not something she was sure she was really wanting to do, but she was led and she knew that she had to to say yes, she had to jump. And then the third thing that we touch on is her passion to heal and share that she has successfully rehabilitated since she was incarcerated for seven years. And she wants everyone to know that it's possible to rebuild and build a huge and successful life. So thank you for your presence. And I know you're gonna enjoy this episode with Latrice. Hey Latrice, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. Hey, thanks so much for having me, I'm excited. Me too. There's a lot of different content to cover today with all your different experiences and what you're bringing into the real estate world. So I wanted to start off by having you share a little bit about who you are and what you do to begin. Sure, sure. Well, my name is Latrice Williams. I am broker owner of Vision Properties here in Spokane, Washington. I am also the legislative lead for housing and homeless advocacy um, in District 4 here in Washington State. And I am a performer entertainer. Um, I, I use performing arts to entertain um, and heal in spaces. Oh my God, I, I love I love that. I think that's it. Uh, and I'm a student support mentor, and I'm a property manager. Oh my gosh, I love this. Okay, well, I want to kind of start off today by actually jumping back into something that you shared the last time we spoke. And you had shared that you actually mentioned that this like journey with real estate started out with dreams that you were having and you were dreaming about all these houses. And I'm wondering if you can tell people kind of like how that part of the journey and how it launched you into real estate. Girl, you see, I had to move the camera up a little bit closer. You know, you caught me in my car today, but <laughs> listen, and I, I, and listen, I know a lot of people won't be able to connect with this, but then there are the, the few that will be able to connect. So a long time ago, some many, many moons ago, I was in a far, far away place. Um, And I was actually incarcerated, actually. And um, during my incarceration, I I went through this kind of tear down um, time where where God just really like brought me all the way down to the suds, if you will, the suds. I'm in housing, so we're always talking about rehabbing houses. Yes. So this, this old thing is my house. He brought me all the way down to the suds. And in that time and rebuilding me back up and teaching me how to hear his voice, I used to be like, God, what's my purpose? Like, I'm on fire. I'm ready to go. I'm ready. Oh my gosh. And there's a train by me. That's okay. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) We caught you on the uh, job today. Right. Right. I'm like, God, I, I just want to be more like you. Like when I get, I'm never going to go back to doing what I was doing before. Just, just, just show me what's my purpose. I want to, I want my purpose. And I'm like, I would be so down and out. Do you hear me? I would be down and out because I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I mean, I've always been a singer. I've always, I've been singing since I was three years old. I probably came out singing, honestly. So I've always been a singer and I'm like, I I do, that is my passion. Music is my passion, but, but something about it. I was like, but God, what am I here for? Like, what's my purpose? And I read this book, Purpose Driven Life. And I read Battlefield of the Mind, Joyce Myers, like all these books, right? And this whole time, I dream about these huge houses, like big houses, small houses, 
ugly houses, really beautiful houses. And I used all the whole time, like I said, I was feeling so down, like, God, why don't I know what my purpose is? Like, I'm, I'm doing everything that you tell me to do. That's so funny right now that I look back at it. And I have this dream journal that I used to write down because I'm a dreamer. I'm a seer. And when I'm, when premonitions come, they come in dreams for me, right? Mm -hmm. Why I didn't catch on to this all those years ago, right? But I have this dream book and in the dream book, it's so cool to just sit there and read all these dreams about, yes, I walked up to this house and oh, this house had a fountain <laughs> uh, in the middle of it. And there was a driveway that went around it. And oh, my mom was standing in front of this house and literally all these houses. And here I am in a housing, everything about me is housing, housing, housing right now. And so um, it's very interesting to actually see what God has in store. So when I think about, I love it when, I love it when God's truth falls into place, like his promises fall into place. Mm -hmm. That's what I love. And when, when we actually get to see it, right? Cause you, you're going to hear things. You're going to hear like, um, I want you to be this, or I want you to do this for this person. You're not going to know what the connection is until the connection actually happens. And when it happens, I love it when that happens, because you're like, oh, that's what that was for. Okay. <laughs> That's incredible. So did it take you a while of seeing those houses before it led you to, or did somebody run into you from the real estate world that? No, no, I was at work. I had gotten out. It was a struggle when I got out because I, it was hard to get a job, right? It was mm -hmm. hard to get a job. I was not only, um, I was in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I was a black woman. Mm -hmm. in Hayden, Idaho, which is where the, you know, the uh, compound used to be. Right. And I think maybe mm -hmm. some people are still there. So it was a struggle at first. And I got a job. I was actually, I thought it was a pretty good job. I was doing affordable care act, health care, you know, the Obamacare, as people would call it, when Obama made it so that everybody could get health care. Mm -hmm. I was working in that field. And then I was hearing from the Holy Spirit. I want you to, I want you to go into real estate. I said, oh, no, 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 you got the wrong one. Like, I know I said I would do, but look, listen, I am comfortable. I finally found some. They they don't care about my background. They know I'm a good worker. Like, I mm -hmm. want to stay here where I'm comfortable. And Holy Spirit, like, a couple weeks later, real estate. You know how it happens. Like, somebody will say something about real estate or somebody will mention something about buying a house or something like that. And I'm like, okay listen, just stop. I hear what you're saying, but you got the wrong one. This is, I don't know anything about real estate. And then finally I yielded. I yielded in, um, January, I'm sorry, December of 2017, I yielded and was like, okay, now mind you with my job, even though I thought I had a really good job, I was still living paycheck to paycheck. Okay. I was making about 2,400 a month, you know, and still I had a bunch of kids and I was married and all that. So I just, I did it. Um, I didn't have the funds to start up, right? Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know what? With my income taxes, because I had a bunch of pizza, I was going to get a refund. I said, I'm going to take my refund and I'm going to invest in my real estate. So I said, okay, God, since you want me to do this, I'm going to go ahead and do it. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it and I'm going to keep my job so that I know I can buy my purses and my hair and stuff, you know, because I need somebody to buy my hair, you know, just in case he says no, I don't like hearing no. And so I ended up doing it. And when I did do it, I finally buckled down and got my license. And after getting my license, I decided that I was going to almost like cheat God, you know, because, you know, God told me to go into real estate. And I was like, OK, well, I'm going to keep the job. So I went to my first training. I don't know if we already talked about this. So let me know if I'm, oh, no. if I'm like uh -uh. talking too much. OK, you're perfect. So I went yeah. to my first training and I'm sitting next to this Rico Suave cat. You know, I call him Rico Suave. Who's, he's my trainer. And then I'm sitting next to my other guy, this big Samoan guy. And, and you can imagine they're men for one, totally different nationalities, like totally different people, cultures and everything. And I'm listening to them and how they're talking to their clients. And I'm like, okay, okay, I can pick it up. And I'm looking through, they had this spreadsheet showing, you know, what everybody's doing, you know, the gross commission income and all that. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. Can you answer a question for me really quick? Is this how much the house was? Was it 30,000 or is that how much you're going to make? Or how much, what was that? He said, no, that's how much I'm going to make this month. I said, oh, 
I said, wait a minute, I think I'm going to quit my job. So I, I quit my job. And literally that, I, two weeks later, I got my first deal under contract. I turned into wow. a Rico, Rico Suave Samoan, <laughs> basically big old Samoan man, little with, mixed with a little black girl. And that got me where I needed to go for those first few months. So you know when it's God, when God tells you to do something and it, it just starts falling into place, as long as you take that step forward so I took that step forward got my license and took the biggest leap which was quit my job because to me I'm like 2400 a month was a lot to me because where I just came from I couldn't make more than three dollars and 24 cents an hour Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. because in prison you don't get to make that kind of money I mean you're you are you know modern day slavery type thing right but we ain't going Mm -hmm. there so um I was, that was really hard for me to be able to let go of that job because I thought that, wait a minute, $16 an hour, boom, I'm making, I'm making good money. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that God wanted to do so much more for me. And so that's how real estate ended up for me. And it just, um, you know how some things you have to work at and, and learn and practice really hard at? Yes. I have gotten it happened so quickly for me. And the Holy Spirit reminds me even today that the word that he gave me while I was getting all those dreams too, he, the, my word back then I had a word, it was suddenly Mm. everything that has happened with me has always been suddenly, suddenly it will take place. Suddenly it will happen. Like I won't even get a chance to think and it'll, it'll be happening, you know, and everything about this career has been a suddenly for me. And I just knew that it couldn't just be me. It -hmm. couldn't just be me. It would have, I would have to show other people how to do what I did. And it wasn't like at the beginning, I was like, Oh, I'm just going to teach everybody. It was not like that. It was like, I still didn't believe in myself. I was like, listen, when, when my managing broker called me in the office and he said, Latrice, I want to invite you to the leadership team. This is after six months of me being in real estate. He goes, I want to invite you in the leadership team. Mark Anderson. I'll never forget him. Hopefully he sees this. I'm going to give him a little shout out. (laughs) And, he says, um, I want to I want to invite you on our leadership because I want you to show everybody else how you're doing what you're doing. And I was like, well, Mark, I don't know how I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm just listening to God. He said, go here. So I just went, mm-hmm. you know, and that's really hard to explain to people like, just listen <laughs> to God. And he'll say, you know, because not everybody thinks like that. Not everybody has that. You know, I, I think everybody has some type of higher power, I would hope, you know, something that they, even if it's a little rock or something, you know, mm-hmm. stone or crystal. But I think that um, when you're trying to tell somebody, hey, you know, just do this, just do what that says, it come, becomes, you kind of look crazy a little bit, you know, most of the time. They're like, mm, Well, you're trusting in something that people can't see. There's like no tangible. And they, this, this, that's what I love talking about. Cause there's so much in the unseen that we have, we have to acknowledge it. Yeah. It is not tangible. Yeah. I tell my kids this all the time. Like you, you're not grasping it because you can't, you can't feel it. You can't say, I'm telling Mm -hmm. you that this is real and Mm -hmm. this is what I want you to do. But because it's not in front of your face, you, you can't, you can't hold it. You can't see it. You can't taste it. So it's like, can't be real. Right. Yeah. So, so, um, that year I, um, I did bring on, I started a team within a team and I ended up selling 44 homes my first year. I was going to say, I read that somewhere. And for people who are listening, if you're not familiar with the real estate industry, the average agent, I think they say sells between five to eight homes a year, just average period. So the fact that you went out that first year and freaking sold 44 homes, unbelievable. Yes. 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 Granted, I came in at a really good time. Um, but I'm not, I'm not taking any of that away from God because that's a God no, thing. That's a God amazing. thing. Right? Yeah. He told me when to do it. I did it. I was obedient. And that's one thing to take away. If anybody's going to take away anything from this podcast, I would take away the, the pure knowledge that we have to be obedient. Right. And I'm not here to sway you one way or the other. All I'm telling you is what happened for me. Mm -hmm. And if you're asking me how I did it, I'm telling you when you get an instruction, regardless of what the instruction is, you have to make sure that you follow through with the instruction. Mm -hmm. The instruction may say, walk down the road five paces and take a right. 
wait there for your next instruction. You better walk down the road five paces and take a right. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then the instructions sometimes are even harder. Like, I want you to jump. I want you to jump. And you not knowing what's at the bottom, you, you're going to be scared to jump, right? Mm -hmm. Me not mm -hmm. knowing who is going to buy my hair and my purses. I was scared to jump. Mm -hmm. I was scared to jump because those were serious things for me at the time, you know, but still are, you know, you caught me at a rough day because I would have been all done up. Kind of <laughs> well, and you have kids too, it sounds like, and I've talked to so many women that are so afraid to take whatever leap it might be because they're like, I can't do it without having a plan. I have kids and I'm like, I get it. And what if there were a net there for you and you don't know until you jump? What if you're going to be caught? Yeah, yeah, you don't know until you actually take the move. You got to make the move. You have to make the move. And I, one thing I will say about my kids is I do have seven children, um, four boys and three girls. And then I have some some um, children that if we were to mix the family, we'd have 10, right? So um, I get the feeling of having, you know, I'm responsible for other people. One thing I did though, is I always have involved them in the process, right? Okay. Like y'all got to understand, I'm going to be out here in the field. I work very different hours than everybody else. I wake up very, very early. And sometimes I'm home very late. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they know and understand that mom has a different kind of job, you know? Um, and so that, I, I don't know. The kids were kind of just like, whatever at first. I think it was harder. It's harder when you have a spouse that's like, Okay, what's going on here? Because I'm not, you know, so making sure that you're being inclusive for them, you mm -hmm. know, like, how do you include them into what you're doing? Um, not everybody is going to be a realtor. Not everybody's going to be, um, you know, a part of real estate in some way. You know, mm -hmm. I tried really hard to, like, make my husband at the time be in, like, development and and construction, you know, or be my secretary just to keep them involved. But the truth is people have their own destiny. And mm -hmm. I think just communicating is the biggest thing to do, making sure that you're communicating and everybody is just understanding what's happening, even though, even though some parts may be harder to understand. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then I think one of the other things about you that I find so inspiring too is that so you're the first female black owned brokerage in spokane washington is epic and also your <laughs> vision your vision behind vision properties to inc be inclusive and to help people who have been incarcerated realize that they can have a life they can have something to look forward to is so beautiful i love what you're doing yeah. and i think it's just it's incredibly inspiring to do something um that you're really following, like you said, you're following your heart, you're following where you're being led. So can you talk a little bit more about your vision for vision properties? So this is my baby. I love talking about vision properties. So vision, obviously, if you know anything about me or even have listened to any of this podcast, I am a visionary. Yeah. I am a seer and I have visions and I see things. And I think it is so important to have a vision to know where you're going because mm -hmm. if you don't have a, some type of vision to know where you're going or where you could be, you will fail mm -hmm. because you're going blind at that point, you know? Um, so let me just start by saying that. Now, I am so excited about offering this firm to other people. Not only, so there's a couple different things about the firm. One is that I want to be inclusive to everybody, right? And we want to have diversity. We want to have equity. We want to have inclusion, all of the above, right? Not just in um, our clients, right? Because we do want to be able to serve any and everybody. We want, I want realtors, right? I want mm -hmm. people to, to be able to learn how to have a, a, a career that's not just a minimum wage job. That mm -hmm. can be much more than that and that it can sustain you because I think the problem, and I, I've said this before in other places, but I'm going to say it here again. The problem is that in reentry programs, we, we set people up to be successful in some way, right? I'm going to give you the jump. I'm going to jumpstart you. But what happens when you get jump started? Because if I'm a person that's been incarcerated or away from my family or whatever the situation is mm -hmm. for, you know, 10 plus years, even, you know, seven plus five plus years, even one year sometimes of incarceration. And I am, 
I need a little more guidance than just mm-hmm. a jump start because I don't even have it in my mind. Like if, if you know anything about the inside, you wake up every day at six o'clock. They're going to turn them lights on at six o'clock, sometimes five, depending on what unit you're in. You're getting up. You're required to make your bed. You're required to go somewhere, right? You got to get off of your bed. You got to be doing something. When you, if you, and so we're going to call that programming for the sake of this, for this. So we're going to call it okay. programming. Everybody's required to program. But then you get back to society and there is no program. There's mm-hmm. no program mm-hmm. other than what you set. But everybody's been setting a program for you. So, so what, what are you going to do at that point? So the object of this brokerage is to not only help people at the beginning point, but also to follow them through so that they can start setting their own program. So that the, and, okay. and the way that we're doing that is through the accountability program. The accountability program is called Account Me In. Okay. With this accountability program, they're going to not focus on five years from now, girl, because I don't know what I'm about to be doing in five years. I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay. Because God might say, look, okay, time's up. Let's go over here. We're not talking about one year from now. That's too far. That's too far, especially for people who have been um, incarcerated or just, I don't Mm -hmm. know, incapacitated for the moment, you know? So sorry, I had to adjust myself because now I'm talking the good stuff. But (laughs) we're talking about shorter, very short goals. Okay. Short term goals. One week. What are you doing this week to better yourself? Mm -hmm. I know you have a big goal. You already have that in mind. But for this week, right? So like somebody may say, um, I want to contact 50 people and tell them about my business. Cause you want to scale your business, right? You want to, you want to get it out there to people. So I want to contact 50 people. Okay. So then you have a daily goal that you fill out. Your weekly goal doesn't change, but your daily goal is going to change every day. And, but it's yeah. going to connect with that weekly goal because how in the world do you have a weekly goal? But every day you do something totally different than the weekly goal. Mm-hmm. You ain't got nothing. Listen, I was supposed to be contacting 50 people, but my daily goal every day says, um, you know, something that's completely contrary to even talking to people. You haven't even tried to open your mouth. Right. And so your daily goal connects with your weekly goal. And then from there, the world is already set up to show you what what's wrong with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to see the news. You're going to see all the negative stuff that's on the news. It is so important for us to keep in the forefront our gratitude, what we're grateful for. What Mm -hmm. are you grateful for? Mm -hmm. You know how hard it is for my students to think about what they're grateful for. That is so it's sad when we think about it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear no no comb over. I, oh, I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my friend. We know that. We know that. What happened yesterday that you're proud of? Yeah. What are you grateful for? What what conversation happened yesterday? Right. Everything in your day was not bad. You know. So having those conversations. So they're required to do five of those. And then my favorite, which I think is the most empowering, are affirmations. Uh, believe it or not, lots of people don't even know what affirmations are. I yeah. like to describe them as an encouraging statement, present tense, because sometimes people will be like, you are the power for yourself. Well, you thank you for telling me that I'm power. What are you? They're mm-hmm. I statements. It's a possessive, present tense, encouraging statement that shows. So even if you don't feel like it now, what we're going to bring the future to the present. Mm-hmm. Right. Forget your past. We're going to bring the future to the present. Well, I think I could be. No, you are that right now then. You are that right now. Well, my goal is to be, my affirmation is soon I will be a a millionaire. No, today I'm a millionaire. Yeah. Because you have the millionaire mindset, right? So that's an affirmation. They're they're very different. So I make sure I like break it all the way down for them. It's so funny because they're oh God, I know. I already already love, like it makes me want to be a part of this accountability program because like I've never, never having experienced incarceration myself, I can still understand how overwhelming it would be. It's overwhelming for me now to think about five years down the road. I don't know what I, where I'm going to be or where I'm going to be sent yeah. or anything like that. So to focus on the yeah. present, on the now and what you can control within your day or your week makes so much sense. Yes, yes. And then it's like, it seems a little more attainable, right? Like if mm-hmm. I'm thinking about, if I'm even thinking about 
a month from now or even you know a few months from now six months from now the summertime oh my gosh what's my body gonna be like girl you worried about the summertime you need to be worried about right now it's still winter you know yes Yes. Bringing people into the present time. So, so that's something that you're sharing with people to, for them to understand what it would be like to join your brokerage. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so the accountability program does come with it. It is a requirement. I hate to say that word, but it's, you just have to Makes do sense. it. Yeah. Um, I, I think that we, we fail people when we just throw them in the, the, the fishbowl mm-hmm. totally and we don't agree. teach them how to swim. And so, I, and I don't feel like I'm a person that's just telling people how to do something. I feel like I've showed um, in the past five years that I've been in real estate, I've showed them that it can be done. And I've been a mentor for so many along the way. And I'm saying, okay, this really works. Let me go ahead and make this my own. It was very important for me, right? It was very important for me to have my own because how can two walk together unless they agree? Mm-hmm. I may think one thing and you may think another, we can, we can, you know, we can be cordial, but we can't walk together because you want to take people that way. And I want to go that way. Mm-hmm. Better yet. You want to take people that way. And I want to go that way. Right. Mm-hmm. And so um, it was very, very important for me to, um, first of all, hear God, because not only did God, he was like, I want you to do real estate at the beginning, right? You heard, you remember that story? When I was supposed to become a brokerage, that's exactly how it went too. Just one day I was doing something and I was like frustrated. I'm like, nah, I, I should have made more money than this. And I just heard in my spirit. He said, and you will. And I was like, okay. Hmm. He's like, you're going to be your own brokerage. I said, oh, no, see, you got too much going on right now. I I don't want that responsibility. This is what I was telling God. See, me and him be getting in arguments, and I don't know if that's appropriate or how it's supposed to go, but he and I be going back and forth and stuff. And I'd be like, no, you got the wrong one. Like, I can't do that. You know, I don't like having that type of responsibility. And then they'd be like, like they, they, they're like, no, you're going to be a brokerage, and then you're going to have a property management company, too. No, because see, first it's a property management company, then it's a broker. I'm like, no, you know, you can't have one without the other. This one you can't do because you got to have this. Oh, I see what you're doing. Okay. And I played with it for a whole year. I was like, okay, maybe he didn't say that, you know. And then I heard distinctly, like, this will happen before December 31st of 2022. This will happen. Um, And so anyway, we made it happen. It happened. Super excited. That's incredible. I want to circle back to, so you said you're also a performer and you sing and you heal through your singing. How does that incorporate through what you're doing in real estate? Well, real estate, to be honest with you, (laughs) real estate funds, uh, the entertainment portion. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important because, you know, whatever God leads you, when he gives you something like a, a, an assignment, he's always going to have, it's when, it, when they say, when it's his will, it's his bill, right? And so real estate truly doesn't have that much connection to my entertaining, okay. but it, it, it pays for it, right? So it, it sponsors it. It sponsors it to happen. What's more important though, is what happens when we entertain. When we entertain and we go out and do that, I don't, I will sing, don't get me wrong, I will sing a song or mm-hmm. two or whatnot. Star Spangled Banner, sure, I'll come sing it, but that's not what I really like to do. Mm-hmm. It's really performing arts that I like to do. And you guys can go look it up on Facebook if you want to. There's some stuff at the NAACP band quit that happened here in Spokane, Washington, where Roland Martin came out and I did um, a reenactment of um, Mamie Till from um, Emmett Till. Uh, we had a casket up there and we had me at the funeral and the church scene in the background it was just a very real raw live um experience that people got to experience especially people my age who who weren't alive back then when things were just so just distraught um and I like Mm -hmm. to reenact um scenes and most of the time, even in my music, the music that I make, they're all a part of some type of scene in my life, believe it or not. I've had some pretty crazy things happen to me. So I think I'll have music or some type of performing for the rest of my life, I'm sure. Yeah. So um, 
it is a very healing process. And I even work with my students on that as well. I have some students who have suffered with anxiety, suffered with depression, suffered with suicide. Um, mm -hmm. So um, when they get to a point where, or suicidal thoughts, of course, not, mm -hmm. not just suicide, but um, so when they get to a, a point where they can um, start expressing themselves, mm -hmm. I and we work through it, we talk about it, we work with, I, I am a student support mentor. So um, I have one-on-ones with students and things of that yeah. nature. And when they get to the point where they're like, okay, Latrice, you know, I'm ready, I'm ready. You know, and some, some of them write poetry, some of them are dancers, some of them, you know, wow. it's in, at some point, if they have any type of performing arts ability, I bring them in and then let them work through it. So a lot of the time, and I won't ever point it out. I won't ever point out anybody's story mm -hmm. um, specifically, mm -hmm. but um, you will, if you pay attention, every scene, every song, if you look up any of my songs, they all tell a story, a real, they're all real life stories. So it's nothing made up. We got enough to talk about. I'm going to, I'm motivated to go check them out after we get off the podcast. I'm going to go listen to you some. Should. I love this. Uh, I haven't even had to look down at my questions. I've just been <laughs> listening. But let me see if there was there was something else. You talked a little bit about last time too about a book that you were writing. I don't know if you've already written it or is that something you're working on that people can look forward to? Yes, I'm in the middle of writing my book. Um, it's called Project 835859. And okay. 835859 is my DOC number, is my DOC number, Department of Corrections, if anybody's wondering what that stands for. Um, and I think it's really important. Um, oh, I'm getting emotional. I, um, when people go away and there's a stigma that's put on people who are incarcerated. There's a very high recidivism rate, meaning that people go in and out and in and out and in and out. And I need to them to know, I need them to know that I was a success story. Mm -hmm. I'm not coming back. Mm -hmm. I need them to know, and I'm talking about them as societies, as the government, as whoever else is interested mm -hmm. in these rates that they have. You have somebody out here that will be the Harriet Tubman of our generation. And I will, I will succeed. And not only will I succeed, but I'm going to bring other people with me. And so the book is the story of, um, I'll give you a little spoiler. It goes from when I got arrested back in 2008 up until about one year ago. And so it talks, it's very in depth about like what it was like incarcerated, the things that I went through, um, the things that I saw, visions and all that. Um, it, it just really goes through the transformation process that I had, mm -hmm. which was, was hard. It was a hard mm -hmm. process, but nonetheless, here I am. That's incredible. I got chills as you were describing it, that I think the really important part that you're sharing too is the barriers that you face when you left to get it reminds me of like what people go through when they've been uh at war too and the ptsd that they experience and coming out of a system where your day is so scheduled it's not you don't even know how to go from that into something else so i think that what you're sharing is really important for a variety of audiences so thank you for your vulnerability and sharing that yes. i appreciate that do you have any anything for people that are listening for ways that they might want to help help your mission and your vision with vision properties? Is there a way that that they can help you after listening to this? Um, yes, I I wish I had um, <laughs> cut that out. Can you tell them to cut that out? Um, how could they help me? Well, I think it's just right now since. I'm, I'm just starting and I don't have all the proper um, links and everything that everybody could go to. I would like everybody to, to just do me a favor and take a look on inside of yourself. Anybody that's watching this, and I want you to search for any biases that you may have. Mm -hmm. I want you to search for any possible wrongdoings that you may have inflicted on someone else. And I want you to really just search your heart and I want us to move forward in progressive, in progression. And what I mean by that is that I want us to move differently now. Mm -hmm. Now that we know what to do and how to do it, we need to just do it. And when we go out there, I don't want us to be um, 
oh, I kind of did this or, you know, oh, wait, I didn't mean it like that. I want us to get rid of all the microaggressions, right? I want us to really, really search. So, so when you get the opportunity and you will get the opportunity because now you've seen this and it's just a setup, right? So, mm-hmm. and I don't mean that in like some negative way, but it's, it is, you're going to get the opportunity. Yeah. Somebody's going to come to you and they're going to need you. And you're going to be the one that's going to have to make the decision. And that person may not look like me. They may not be brown like me. Mm -hmm. They may not be short like me. They may not, you know, be as successful as me. But I'll tell you one thing that they will have in common with me. They will have a similar story as me. They will, they will be formerly incarcerated. They will have some type of tie to some type of systemic, maybe, maybe even, um, uh, what do you call it? Addiction. They may have dealt mm-hmm. with addiction and you're going to be the force, the opportunity that they have to be able to make a difference. I would love to see more people turn into Harriet Tubman's or more people turn into the bridge instead of what tears it down. Mm-hmm. Right. And so that's what you can do for me. I don't have a foundation for you to donate to. And I don't, you know, I, like I said, when it's his will, it's his bill. So I really don't need nobody's money. I mean, he's going to provide it. If you're supposed to give it, you're going to give it. But at the end of the day, I think what's most important is that you take my words, not just my story, but the people that you meet later down the line, I want you to look at them differently. Like, mm-hmm. I just, you know, that little girl, Latrice, I just heard her talking about stuff and such and such. Maybe this is that situation. Not maybe this is it. Mm-hmm. It's your time. It's your time. And I guarantee you, if you change how you operate and how you treat people, that one person, that is going to change the trajectory of your whole entire life. Yeah. Uh, I, lo- I like mic drop right there. I, lo- <laughs> I love it. This is it. This is your time. Thank you so much for taking the time to share and tell your story with the audience and the people that are listening and watching. And I'm going to put your contact information in the description. So for people who are moving to Spokane or moving to surrounding areas, they can reach out to you. Or if they're a real estate agent and they're interested in being a part of your brokerage, I'm going to make sure to put all that contact info in there. But thank you again. And I look forward to just following along in your journey and seeing where you go. This is going to be spectacular. Yay. Thank you so much. I I appreciate you, Mo. Thank you so much.